If you like our video, click the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses and training materials, visit us at teachucomp.com. In addition to handling bounce checks by invoicing, as shown in the previous lesson, you can also enter a bounce check from a customer into QuickBooks Online Plus by creating an expense or journal entry to negate the bounce check payment you received. As mentioned in the previous lesson, if you use an expense or journal entry, it must come from a customer originally invoiced using the account's receivable account. For example, you can use the expense or journal entry method if the bounce check was received from a customer payment on an invoice using the Receive Payment window. To handle a bounce check using an expense or journal entry, the first step is to create a new expense or journal entry to negate the received payment for the bounce check. Note that you only need to create one of these two types of transactions to negate the received payment. If you want to create an expense to negate the bounce check, then click the plus new button in the navigation bar, and then click the expense link under the vendors heading in the drop down menu to open the expense window. Select the customer that bounced the check from the payee drop down field. Select the account the bounced check's funds were supposed to go into from the Payment Account drop-down. Enter the date the original check bounced into the Payment Date field. Type NSF or something similar into the Reference Number field. In the first row of the Category Details line item list, Select Accounts Receivable or the specific Accounts Receivable account you used from the Category drop-down. Type NSF Check or something like that into the Description field. Then enter the amount of the bounced check into the Amount column in this row. You must then select the name of the customer who bounced the check from the Customer drop-down. Then click the Save and Close button in the toolbar at the bottom of this screen to save the expense and close the page. Alternatively, if you want to create a journal entry to negate the bounced check instead of the expense, then instead click the plus new button in the navigation bar and then select the Journal Entry link under the other heading to open the Journal Entry page. Then enter the date the check bounced into the Journal Date field. On the first line of the Journal Entry, select Accounts Receivable or the specific Accounts Receivable account you used from the Account drop-down. Then enter the amount of the bounced check into the Debits column for that row. Enter the reason for the journal entry like Customer Bounced Check into the Description field. You must then select the name of the customer that bounced the check from the Name column. On the second line, select the account the bounced check's funds were supposed to go into from the Payment Account drop-down. Ensure the amount shown in the Credits column for the second line matches the amount shown under the Debits column for the first line to ensure accurate double entry. Then click the Save and Close Choice from the drop-down button in the toolbar at the bottom of the window to save the journal entry and close the page. After creating either the expense or the journal entry, you then need to change the existing payment you previously made in the Receive Payment window when you received the bounced check to apply the new expense or journal entry you just created in its place instead of the original invoice. To do this, hover over the Sales or Invoicing link in the navigation bar, and then click the Customers link in the side menu that appears to open the Customers page. Then click the name of the customer that bounced the check in the Customers list to open the Customers Transaction list. Locate the Payment for the original bounced check in this list and click it to open the Receive Payment window. In the Receive Payment window, uncheck the original invoice with which the bounced payment was associated. Then find the expense or journal entry you just created and check it to balance the original payment with the new expense or journal entry. When finished, click the Save and Close button in the toolbar at the bottom of the screen to save it and close the page.
The original invoice is then marked unpaid and the bounce check and expense or journal entry you created will cancel each other out. If available to you in your jurisdiction, you may also want to create a separate invoice for the bank service charges you paid. Note that you should not edit the original invoice. Before you create a new, separate invoice for the bounce check fees, you must already have or create a service item to recoup the fees paid to the bank. If this is the first time handling a bounce check, then you may need to create one. If not, then this item may already exist in your products and services list and you should check to make sure one exists. You only need to create it once and can then use it for bounce checks you receive later. Also, if you do not know the rules for your location, first check with your accountant to ensure you can collect bounce check fees. If you need to create the new service item to collect bounce check fees, click the settings button in the QuickBooks Online toolbar and then select the products and services link under the lists heading in the drop down menu to open the products and services page. Then click the new button in the upper right corner of the page to open the product service information pane. Then click the service choice to show the next pane. In the name field, then enter a name like Bounce Check Fee. Use the Income Account drop-down to select a Contra Income or Expense Account used to track Bounce Check Fees. You can select the Bank Charges and Fees Expense Account or click the Add New option to create a new account as needed. Then select Non-Taxable from the Sales Tax Category drop-down. Then click the Save and Close button to save it and close the pane. To create a separate invoice for the bank fees, click the plus new button in the navigation bar and then click the invoice link under the customer's heading. Select the customer that bounced the check from the customer dropdown. Enter the date the check bounced into the invoice date field. Then, if legally allowed and if desired, select the bounce check fee item from the product service dropdown in the first row of the line items area. Then enter the amount of the charge from your bank, or the maximum amount you are legally allowed to charge, if applicable, into the amount column for this line. In the lower left corner of the invoice, type whatever message you want to display to this customer in a statement should you choose to send a statement for the invoices to pay into the Message on Statement field. Then click the Save and Close button to save the invoice and close the window. To enter the bank service charge you paid for the bounce check as an expense, click the plus new button in the navigation bar and then click the expense link under the vendors heading to open the expense window. Select your bank from the payee dropdown. Select the bank account from which your bank withdrew the funds from the payment account dropdown. Enter the date the check bounced into the payment date field. Then type something like NSF fee into the reference number field to reference the type of expense. Select your bank charges and fees expense account or whichever expense account you use to track your bank fees from the category column in the category details line item list. Then enter the amount you were charged by the bank for the bounced check into the amount column. Then click the Save and Close button in the toolbar to then save it and close the window. You can then send a billing statement to the customer to collect the open invoices on their account. A billing statement helps summarize and consolidate the information in the invoices they owe. To create a statement for the individual customer who bounced the check, hover over the Sales or Invoicing link in the navigation bar, and then click the Customers link in the side menu that appears to open the customer's page. Find the name of the customer to whom to send a statement in the customer list. Then click the drop down arrow in the action column for their row and select the create statement link in the menu that appears to open the create statements window and select only that specific customer. Depending on your preference, choose either the balance forward or open item choice from the statement type drop down. Select the dates to show in the statement depending on your choice. Then click the Apply button if needed. To preview the statement, 
Click the Print or Preview button in the toolbar at the bottom of the window to examine the statement in a PDF preview window. You can then click the Print icon within the window to print a copy of the statement. Then click the Close button to close the PDF preview window when finished if needed. Alternatively, if you communicate via email with this customer, you can click the Save and Send Choice from the drop-down button in the Create Statements window to send an electronic copy of the statement to the customer immediately. After the customer remits payment on this statement, follow the normal procedure to accept payment on the invoice or invoices you created by using the Receive Payment page as usual. Remember to click the subscribe button to see more of our videos. Get ad-free courses at teachucomp.com.